Lesson 14, The Mass Spectrometer. Part 1, The Velocity Selector. A velocity selector is used in experimental physics to determine the velocity of charged particles. The velocity selector is used to sort out or select charged particles of a chosen velocity so that they can be used in an experiment. If you picture the velocity selector like a box where you can send a whole bunch of different kinds of charged particles with different velocities in, you would only get particles of a particular velocity out. So if we have a whole bunch of different charged particles all with different velocities, some of them will be deflected upwards due to their velocity and they will never exit the box. Some of them will be deflected downwards due to their velo velocity and will never exit the box and only the ones with the exact right velocity will manage to make it through undeflected and pass through the box. As a result, scientists know that the charged particles that leave the velocity selector have the velocity that they've chosen. Charged particles with different velocity goes in but only the ones with the selected velocity can come out. Inside the velocity selector, there is both a magnetic field and an electric field. We'll draw the magnetic field as pointing into the page. The electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field. We're going to draw our electric field so it's pointing downward. Always in a velocity selector, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field. So if a particle was charged, let's make this particle positively charged, is sent into the velocity selector with a velocity, it will experience an electric force in the direction of the electric field. In this case, downwards. It will also experience a magnetic force. We can determine the direction of the magnetic force by using the third hand rule. We point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the page. We point our thumb in the direction of the particle's velocity, which is to the right. And we use our right hand because it's a positively charged particle. When we do this, we find that the palm of our hand, which is the direction of the force, points upwards. So the magnetic force opposes the electric force and pulls the particle upwards. If the magnetic force is greater than the electric force, the particle will be deflected up. And won't exit the velocity selector. If the magnetic force is less than the electrostatic force, the particle will curve down in the direction of the electric force. Because it's deflected off the straight line path, it won't make it out of the velocity selector. But if the magnetic force is equal to the electrostatic force, the particle will pass flute through undeflected since the net force is zero. We can calculate the exact velocity that will give us an undeflected particle. The undeflected particle happens when the magnetic force is equal to the electrostatic force. Magnetic force is B Q V. Electrostatic force is Q times the electric field strength. Since Q appears on both sides of the equation, we can divide both sides by Q and Q cancels out. We can rearrange this for V, moving the magnetic field to the other side of the equation getting the velocity is equal to E over B. So when you have a velocity equal to 
the magnitude of the electric field divided by the magnetic field the particle will pass through undeflected and the charge of the particle doesn't even affect the required velocity. And that's because charge cancelled out in the equation. Example, a proton is sent through a 300 Tesla magnetic field into the page and a 900 Newton per Coulomb electric field pointing down. At what speed will the proton pass through undeflected? Let's draw a picture of the situation. We've got a magnetic field into the page. And the magnetic field strength is 300 Teslas. We have an electric field pointing down. And the electric field strength is 900 Newtons per Coulomb. A proton is sent into this velocity selector and we want to know what velocity will pass through undeflected. Again, it will be undeflected when the magnetic force which is up is balanced out by the electrostatic force which is down, where BQV equals QE, where Q is cancelled out on each side. This gives us a velocity electric field divided by a magnetic field will to pass through undeflected. This is 900 newtons per coulomb divided by 300 teslas, which gives us a velocity to pass through undeflected of 3 meters per second. Part 2, the mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometers use the radius of curvature of a particle in a magnetic field to determine the particle's mass. Mass spectrometry was used to determine the atomic mass listed for the elements on the periodic table. So every time you look at the periodic table and see the atomic mass for each element listed, know that that was found using mass spectrometry. In a mass spectrometer, an ion is first ionized. Electrons are added or removed so that it has a known charge, Q. The ion passes through a velocity selector to determine its velocity. So the velocity of the particle is found using the velocity selector, which is found using an electric field divided by a magnetic field. The ion is then sent through a known magnetic field. Notice that the velocity selector has a known magnetic field. We'll call this B1. And the mass spectrometer has a separate magnetic field, different from the one in the velocity selector, so we'll call this B2. The radius of curvature of the ion's path in the magnetic field of the mass spectrometer is measured. This is R and the ion's mass is calculated based on its known velocity and radius. The magnetic force on a particle is B, Q, V, and this is the magnetic force in the mass spectrometer, so it's B2, Q, V. The particle is moving in a circular path, so we have a centripetal force, which is mv squared over r. And since the centripetal force is caused by the magnetic force, fm equals fc. This means bqv equals mv squared over r. v appears on both sides of the equation, so it can be cancelled out once. And then we can rearrange this equation for m to get m equals the magnetic field of the ma mass spectrometer times q times r divided by the velocity of the particle in the mass spectrometer. The velocity of the particle was found using the velocity selector, so the velocity of the particle is given by the electric field of the velocity selector divided by the magnetic field of the velocity selector, which is b1. Here's a diagram of the stages of mass spectrometry. In step one, atoms are ionized, meaning electrons are added or removed, 
and they're released at various different velocities. Let's call these ions positively charged for the purpose of this example. In step two, they arrive at a velocity selector. The velocity selector contains a magnetic field. We'll call this B1 and an electric field and only the ions with the velocity that allows it to pass through the velocity selector will pass through undeflected. Others might be deflected down due to the electric field or deflected up due to the magnetic field. Particles that have a velocity equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field of the velocity selector will not be deflected. In step 3, the particles arrive at the mass spectrometer step. This is a magnetic field intended to deflect the particles from their path. We'll call this magnetic field 2 because it's different from the magnetic field of the velocity selector. When the particles arrive in this magnetic field, they're deflected upwards. The radius of their deflection is measured, and this is used to determine the mass of the particle. The mass of the particle is equal to the magnetic field of the mass spectrometer times the charge of the particle times the radius of deflection divided by the velocity of the particle in the mass spectrometer step. This velocity is found through the velocity selector stage, and that's equal to the electric field of the velocity selector divided by the magnetic field of the velocity selector. Example, an electron passes undeflected through a velocity selector. The velocity selector has a perpendicular magnetic field and electric field of 300 teslas and 200 newtons per coulomb respectively. After, it experiences a radius of curvature of 7.6 times 10 to the negative 15 meters when it enters a 500 tesla magnetic field of a mass spectrometer. What is the mass of the electron? So we have an electron, and we're going to pretend that this electron has an unknown mass, but a known charge passes into a velocity selector so we can determine its velocity. I'm going to draw my velocity selector with magnetic field into the page. And the magnetic field strength is equal to 300 teslas. The velocity selector also has an electric field. In this case, the electric field direction needs to be upwards since the magnetic force for the electron will be downwards so that the electric field can cancel out the magnetic field's force. So the electric field strength is equal to 200 newtons per coulomb. We can determine the velocity of the electron that passes through undeflected using our velocity selector formula. Velocity is equal to electric field divided by magnetic field. This is 200 newtons per coulomb divided by 300 teslas, which is 0 0.6 repeating meters per second. So an electron that has a velocity of exactly 0 0.6 repeating meters per second will pass through this velocity selector stage undeflected and will, as a result will know its velocity. The electron then enters a separate magnetic field. This is the magnetic field of the mass spectrometer. This magnetic field strength is equal to 500 teslas. As it enters this magnetic field, because it has a velocity, it experiences a radius of curvature and curves down. The radius is determined to be 7.6 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. The mass of the electron is determined by equating the circular motion force formula with the magnetic force formula and gives us mass equals b q r divided by v. So mass is 500 teslas times the charge of the electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times the radius of curvature in the mass spectrometer which is 7.6 times 10 to the negative 15 meters divided by the velocity as determined by the velocity selector, which is 0.6 repeating. This gives us a mass equal to 
9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms.